Hi everyone. Um, today we're going to do a video on. Um, well, I want to paint a very, very loose experimental landscape, uh, a little castle hole out in Castle in Northumberland. Um, I just thought I'd quickly show you the the leaf I did from last time. Um, so I've actually, I, I don't know if you remember, I was going to stick it down with some PVA glue, um, which I've done, and it actually helps to sort of um, keep the leaf in shape. And also, it stops the the colour sort of um, going too brown too quickly, and it's just nice to have the two things in your book and uh, next to it. So I've got that was the drawing I did in the video, um, and I just added a little bit of text to it, just awesome. And you could add more uh, words on there, describing words if you wanted to do that, some adjectives, which would be quite nice, or a poem or something. Like that. It's just a, um, just a nice way to sort of show the two things together. And obviously, having the original and um, the drawing is quite nice to have them back to back as well. Um, so I just thought I'd quickly show you that. Okay, so new page in the sketchbook. And um, what I've got is I've got a, a photograph which I took of Holy Island Castle, Lindisfarne, up in Northumberland, uh, quite a while ago. It's not a great picture. It's, it was quite a dull day. Um, but I'm just going to have that as a reference. Um, I'm, there's no pencils today. It's all just um, watercolour paint and brush. And I've only got the one brush. And it's, it looks quite a big, chunky brush if you look at it. Uh, it's not a tiny little brush. I tend not to use uh, little brushes unless you've got a really good quality one. It's just as well to use, if it's a nylon brush, it's just as well to use um, a sort of medium sized brush and just trying your best to get a nice tip on it. And the way I do that is, I, I don't think you can see, but I rotate the brush in, you'll see me when I'm working, I rotate the brush through the paint and just drag it like that away from the paint. And as I'm rotating with a damp brush, it's, you should be able to sort of pull the uh, the bristles of the brush into a nice point and you can get little, little details and things like that with your brush when it's, when it's just like that. Okay, so I'm just going to move that to one side. So I've got that as a reference. So I'm looking at the picture um, and I'm just going to paint in the area and I'll start with a, a light wash. And I'll probably pause the video at certain points because there will need to be a little bit of drying time. And drying de always depends on um, the sort of the temperature in the room, uh, how warm it is, basically. Uh, the, obviously, the warmer the room, the, the quicker it's going to dry. I'm just going to use a palette of purples today. Purples, reds, a little bit of orange. Um, you can try any colours you want. We're talking about artistic license last time, I believe, uh, or I might have mentioned something like that. Just because the picture is dull, you've got your reference. It doesn't mean you have to paint exactly. You can. You can paint the colours you see, or you can just use the shapes and the forms that you're looking at of the castle itself and the uh, the, the landscape here and the water. But it's all very light and, uh, as I say, a little bit a little bit boring really if you look at it as a picture. So basically, I can use any colours I want. So I'm going to use purple. So I'm mixing the purple here. In my in my palette, and then um, I've got the lids just under the, the sketchbook here. But I'm, I use the lids a lot. That's your palette, so you you mix you can mix your colours in there. So you can see the purple I'm mixing there. That's a colour from last time, probably from the leaf actually that red. And um, so I've just mixed a bit more red in there. I don't worry too much about it. As I say, this is an experimental picture. So all I want to do, I'm waffling on loads. So I'm just going to stop talking for a minute. I'm gonna, I might say one or two words as I'm just painting this in. And I'm just looking at my picture, and I'm just basically painting in some long lines to match. I should have had the uh, the image for you. Look at the image as well. Some long lines to match uh, what I see in the photograph. Okay, and I've got a sky there. I sort of think about sky colour. You see all the paint running in together. I don't know if you can see that, but it's all kind of running in. That's fine. That's that's the fun of using watercolours. Okay, so there's quite a lot of water on there at the minute, and um, that's okay. I'm just at the minute. I'm just putting in a little sort of background first, sort of background wash into it. And don't be too finicky. There will be mistakes. There will be things that don't you don't quite want to happen, but that's part of the beauty of using watercolours. Okay, so again, I'm just kind of put, painting some thinner sections I can see in there. Um, these areas in here, I'm just sort of painting those in. And again, the colours don't really relate that much. That's fine. It's a painting. It's not a photograph. Okay, I've already got the photograph. I'm trying to create something that's exciting and, and visually appealing to people. All right. Um, so again, some darker areas in here. I'm using the tip of the brush now, I was using the, the broad strokes of the brush before, clean off a little bit. A little tip as well, there's quite a lot of water on that at the minute, if you want to try this out. Clean my brush, by the way, you start with clean water, don't overfill your pot. Clean water, and I just dry, I dry the brush off, and you actually lift some areas, you can lift some of the paint back out, it almost acts like a sponge. And you can lift some of those, that water out off the, off the page if it's getting a little bit too wet. And it's also quite nice, I do this a lot when I'm painting, do my own watercolours, you can lift the paint out and you get some really lovely effects it sort of leaves the, like a nice sharp edge in but you take the actual colour off the page and that can be really quite effective as well it depends what you want to do I'm getting into that quite a lot now it's really nice 
I'm enjoying that. And I've got to think about the sky as well. So I think what I'll do with the sky here is I'm going to go for a little bit. Um, oh, what can I do? I think I'll go for a blue, which is, sounds a bit boring, but what I'll do is quite a bright blue. And we'll see how it looks. If it's not quite, if I'm not quite happy with it, we can always mix some other colours in it. So it's quite bright, but I'm not putting too much paint in there because I don't want the, the sky to overtake everything. Okay, I'm using plenty of water, letting it run in. You can tip your page as well, so I could tip the page a little bit. Let the colours all run down. So you can see the blue sort of running in. The purple there, and at the minute it just looks like a, well, a bit of a blobby mess for you. But I like that. Oops, my, my paintbrush is flaking there as well a little bit. Let's take that a little bit off. All right. And I've got the, the water to think about. Now obviously the water is clear, but it, it picks up the reflection of the sky. So I may as well just put some of the blue I'm using for the sky. I may as well put that in as well. All right. So again, first wash, letting the colours blend again. These are this is lovely now. What's coming in here? Really liking that. That was great. Quite broad strokes at this stage, and we're just going to pause it there, let it dry, and I'll come back to it in a second. Okay, we're back. Um, I've just literally let that dry out for five minutes. Um, just next to my little um, radio in the, in the studio and basically it's sort of dried out. There's some damp patches but that's fine. All I'm looking for in the drying is that I know wet wet paint next to wet paint will just bleed together and I would like to try and get a clean edge on the on the outside of the castle so I'm going to dry a little bit. Again I'm just going to probably use a little bit of the blues mixed together, maybe a little bit of the purple. I'll stick with those sort of, that colour palette I think. Um, and what I'll do is, um, I'll just get a bit of red on that. Just use the lid there to sort of mix your colours together a little bit. And I'll just twiddle my brush so I get a nice tip on it. It's not great a great tip. I'll have a go with it. If not, I'll get a smaller brush out. Um, but all I'm going to do is paint some of the details in of the castle now. So I'm looking at it carefully. I'm hold, holding the, the brush like a little pencil. And I'm just going to paint in some of the edges. I think this is good. This brush is going to be a little bit too thick for it. But we'll just it is experimental, so it doesn't really matter. That's yeah, fine. Let's go with it. So what I'm doing is I'm painting the outside edge of it and I'm always put details in later on when the, when the layers have dried up but it's really about getting used to the watercolours at this stage I think um, so we're just trying to as I say experiment with different techniques and find out what, hap what happens when you do certain things with the watercolour paint uh, and water being what it is it just kind of does its own thing a little bit you can control it a little bit but ultimately it's going to do its own thing so it's just about getting used to what it, it wants to do rather than what you want it to do um, as I say, you can't really control it too much, so I'm just painting that edge of the castle in there. When I'm happy with it, I'm going to get a different colour. And I'm just going to wash in some, some blue and then let the colours mix together and see what we'll get with that. I'm not looking for too much accuracy in the colour. Maybe with the actual shape of the castle a little bit. Um, just pop a paint in there as it comes at the rocks here. If you haven't been to Holy Island, it's fantastic. And obviously Northumberland, uh, the northeast of England, is amazing. I lo absolutely love the county of Northumberland. Um, absolutely beautiful, very unspoiled, and there's some really sort of rural, um, quiet areas to find in in there. And also, a beautiful place to paint as well and draw. Just come back to the, to the palette there, get some more colour into it. And it's about really sort of finding, like mixing water on your brush, but um, and finding how much um, how much water to add and when um, the colours are going to mix together. And again, I'm just going to clean my brush there because I want these two colours to mix. So I'm just going to put too much water on that, take a bit of the water off and just run some water into it and let the colours sort of blend and merge and just see what you get with it. So once I get that edge in, I kind of relax a little bit now. But I was saying before, you could get a big blob of water. I don't know if you can see there's a massive blob of water on the end of that brush there. Probably can't see it on the video, but if I just blob a bit of water into it, it just runs right in. And then what I can do, again, I'll clean my brush with my hands. Just I've washed the water off, just dry it with your hands. And then just lift some of the colour out. I don't think you can see that on there. And you get a lovely sort of outline, uh, almost a little bit mysterious if you like. Okay, and as I see, you can add details in later on. So what I can do now is, it because it's all dried off again, it's not going to run. I can just basically wash in some colours again using the same sort of colours I was using before. And you can see how that's layering up lovely. Now watercolour is brilliant. Um, it's, it's almost I don't want to describe it like like light layers, almost like an onion skin. You peel an onion, you've got layer upon layer. In an onion, it's a little bit like water colors, a bit like that. Try and keep them quite light. I'm working quite heavy today, so we can see on the video. But the lighter you work with it, often the better it looks. But you've got to be patient, so you've got to be able to let it dry. If you want to work in that way, you don't have to be like that. But if you want to work in that way, you have to sort of be a little bit patient, let it dry off, and then come back to it. And less is it's a bit of a cliche, really, but less is more. 
So just know when to stop. Um, and somebody might watch the video and think, well, I think you should stop now, actually. But um, it's it's going okay. And you got because of the mess we made before at the start, it's all blending again. You've actually got something that looks a little bit like a reflection down here. You probably can't see it too much on the uh, on the actual video, but I'll maybe um, pause it and I'll give you a little bit of a close up later on before just as we're finishing off. Okay, I'm just going to pause again, have a bit more mess around there, put a few more reflections in, then we'll probably just finish off. Okay, I've, I've actually what I, I got into there um, with my tissue, I always have a, a, a little bit of paper, paper towel or a, a bit of tissue. And um, what I did was I was I was putting lots and lots of water into it, like I was doing before, and then drying the brush and then lifting some of it out. I sometimes use my hand, but because I was doing that so much, I've had to use a, a little paper towel there. So that's a really useful tip, have a paper towel ready. Especially if you, I've seen before, that, that pot's quite full. Only have your pot of water half full, because if you spill that over, Knock it over, it can spoil your work. And you would get an accident, a happy accident sometimes, but because of the mess it would make, but because you've got other work in your book that you might have done, it's going to spoil your work. So only for, you can always change the water and refresh it if you need to when it gets too muddy, especially if there's a couple of you using the pot. Um, but always just half fill your pot of water because if you if you do spill it, it'll just spoil your, your sketchbook. Okay, so there's a tip for you. And um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I've lifted loads of the colour out of here, and I quite like what's happening. I could work back into the loads, and I'm really tempted to do that, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm just going to leave it as experimental. So we've talked today about just you know little techniques you can use the watercolour. But actually, if you think about a landscape, the, I would describe the castle as in the in the mid ground of the picture. You've got the background, which is the sky. You can't really see the horizon. There's a little bit in here but you can't really see, which is the sea, where the sky meets the sea as you look out. So I'd say the castle's in the um, the mid ground. You've got this as well, which is kind of mid ground, the the landscape here, and you've got a foreground, which is the 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 reeds around the sort of the edge of the the sea here, the North Sea. Um, so you've got a foreground, which is the the reeds and the water. The mid ground, which is the actual land you can see, and the castle, and you've got the background as well, which is the sky and the the horizon line. Okay, so you think about that as well. So layer up at least in three layers when you're having a little practice at this, doing your own castle. Okay, and I think I'm going to leave it there. I'll probably just wash in a few more reflections. Um, and what I would say is, if you would like, um, when you're working in class doing this, um, I know we're, we're going to be doing this um, as an experiment in, in school. So if you want to, if what I'll do is, all the students who are doing that, um, if you would like as a, as a prize for the, uh, the the best sort of experimentation, um, what I'll do is I'll um, we'll have this as a little... A prize if you want this picture if you want it that is uh, okay so um i look forward to giving that to somebody very soon thank you